Hi there. This will be the first video lecture that you're encountering, so let's just dive right in. I will remind you to make sure that you have your lecture guide available so that you can fill it out as you're watching, because um, I will be collecting them after the unit is over. All right, so we're going to start with information processing. Mainly, how does memory work? How do we create memories? We make them every day, every time we're walking around town, hanging out with our friends, even sitting in class. We're making memories. But how does this happen? So scientists and psychologists have devised a basic structure as to how memories are made. And these involve three steps. The first step is known as encoding. This is where we process information into the memory system. The next phase is storage, the retention of encoded information over time. So information enters our senses and then is stored in our memory banks. But after we store these memories, they're not just going to sit there. We need to retrieve them. So retrieval is the process of getting information out of memory storage. So we encode the information as it comes to us. We store it away in our memory banks, and then we're able to retrieve it, much like a computer does. But, as you'll see, our brain is a bit more complicated than a computer. So, these guys named Atkinson and Schifrin devised this three-stage processing model of memory. Now, it's a bit complicated, but once you get the gist of it, it's quite easy to understand. So, let's start. So we have external events. I'm walking around town, I see cars, I see the sky, I hear sounds, I smell things. I live in Oakland, so I smell lots of weird things. The external events are happening. Now, I get sensory input from these external events. These sensory inputs creates a sensory memory, meaning all that I encounter through my senses gets stored in sensory memory, which is a kind of short-term memory. Now, we can define this as the immediate, very brief recording of sensory information in the memory system. So it's very brief. You might not think that everything that you encounter through your senses is stored in memory, but it is. So, we then choose to pay attention to certain bits of information. We, there's no way that we can possibly focus on every single sensory bit of sensory information that enters our senses. Otherwise, we'd be overloaded. So. We encode things that we deem to be important. And this is what's called our short-term memory, or what's now referred to as working memory, which we'll get into in a little bit. So working memory, or short-term memory, is the activated memory that holds a few items briefly before the information is stored or forgotten. So after we receive the sensory information, and it gets processed as sensory memory, then it gets processed as short-term memory which means that it's right at the forefront of our consciousness and if we want to access it immediately we can or it can get processed into long-term memory this is what we know as everything that we can remember in our entire life so long-term memory is this relatively permanent and limitless storehouse of the memory system we're going to see in a little bit exactly how limitless this storehouse can be and so this is the encoding process when memories from the short-term memory enter the long-term memory, they're encoded in visualizations, in sounds, in colors, anything that can anchor it into our long-term memory. But then, we have to retrieve this long-term memory. So when we do so, the long-term memory enters our short-term memory. And as you'll see, each time that we do this, uh, the file gets corrupted a little bit. It's not the true memory our consciousness gets in the way. So just to repeat, we have external events that are sensory inputs. These get processed into sensory memory, but then we choose which bits of sensory memory to enter into our short-term memory, which is basically at the forefront of our consciousness, ready to be acted upon. However, these short-term memories can be then further encoded into long-term memory. And these are the things that we know about ourselves, these important events that make up who we are. But, if we want to retrieve these, we'll have to access them through our short-term memory. So this is the three-stage processing model of memory, basically put forth by Atkinson and Schifrin. Okay, but 
over the years, scientists have come to a new, sort of more sophisticated version of short-term memory, and this is what we call working memory. So scientists have found that there are these three main areas that go on in working memory. But just briefly to define this, this is basically a newer understanding of short-term memory that involves conscious, active processing of incoming sensory input, meaning audio-visual information, things that we get from the senses, and information retrieved from the long-term memory. So in short, we could see working memory as sort of the intermediary between sensory input on one side and long-term memory on the other side. So let's just look at a, a little diagram I put together to figure out how this works. So we have what's called the central executive function. You may recognize this once you think about it. This is the little voice inside your head that tells you what to focus on, what to attend to, what to respond to. So this is our conscious processing, the central executive function. Now this function on one side has to process auditory information. And so the way that we do this normally meaning the way that auditory information gets processed into our memory is usually through repeating things. For example, whenever I want to memorize a phone number, or if I'm not near anything to write it down, I have to repeat it. 845-533-7487. 845-334-blah-blah-blah-blah. Blah, blah, blah. You get it. I'm not very good at it. Usually I forget, which is why I have to write it down immediately. But on the other side, you can see that the central executive function also processes what we call visual spatial information. This is basically anything that enters our consciousness through our eyes. And so the visual spatial sketch pad is in our heads when we can sort of visualize something physical. For example, when you're thinking about how to rearrange your room, you can visualize the room and you can manipulate the objects in your mind. That's what I did when I rearranged this classroom. All right, so in short, the working memory that we've described here is the intermediary between sensory information on one side and long-term memory on the other side. What we have in front of us here is the way in which our central executive function processes sensory information coming from both our eyes and our ears. All right, so I think that'll do it for now. I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night.